Wonderful. And so next, we have yet another wonderful speaker coming to the stage. And so our speaker for this afternoon is Sanjiwa Malgada. And Sanjiwa is an architect and associate director at WSO2. And we'll be speaking about the managing the usage of asynchronous APIs. And so when you're ready, please come to the stage. There you are. Okay. okay. <laughs> and please feel free to share your slides. Yes. Okay, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes. Okay, shall I start? Yes, please start when you're ready. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm starting. So hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon for everyone who are joining from uh, many different locations around the world. So uh, in this session, I'll be uh, discussing about the managing the usage of asynchronous APIs. Uh, my name is Sanjay Malabad. I work for WC2 as Software Architect and the Associate Director of Engineering. Uh, so in my role, I primarily uh, overlook uh, research and development side of the WC2 API Manager product. And also I work with customers and other stakeholders and uh, collect about the features. And uh, I also work with the research and development team uh, to uh, implement these uh, new features. So uh, uh, when it comes to asynchronous APIs, uh, so that is, uh, I, I want to discuss about that today because of the experience that we gain uh, by working with asynchronous APIs over like uh, last one, two years. So uh, we introduced uh, async API features into WS3 API Manager. And while working on that, uh, we gained some experience. And uh, today I want to share that experience with you all. Right? Okay, so uh, this is the agenda for today's session. So first I'll start with uh, asynchronous APIs. I know you all are familiar with asynchronous API, but just to uh, make things complete, I will quickly go through the overview of the asynchronous APIs. Then uh, I will discuss about the usages of the asynchronous APIs. Then uh, we can discuss about the API management uh, for the asynchronous APIs. Then uh, there are some challenges associated with asynchronous API management and the solutions uh, uh, for them. So uh, uh, to start with uh, asynchronous API, uh, first we will see uh, what does it mean by synchronous communication. So as you can see in this uh, image, uh, we have a, a store here and people are waiting on queue. So uh, once you reach uh, the counter, uh, you can have a chat with the uh, shop owner and uh, buy whatever you need, right? So this is a synchronous communication. You always uh, talk to him directly and uh, tell what you need and then collect uh, items for you and then uh, pay the cash and walk away with the food. Okay, so this is the basic uh, synchronous communication idea. Then uh, if you consider traditional uh, SOAP or uh, uh, even REST API calls, uh, we are following the same process, right? So we usually uh, communicate to API gateway or API backend with the information that we have. It can be like query params, path params and things like that. So along with that, uh, we communicate with the uh, API management system or the API gateway, and we get uh, a desired outcome. So this happens in the blocking way. So that is why uh, we call it synchronous communication. So uh, the usages of synchronous APIs, including uh, checking your account balance, or uh, when you want to uh, initiate fund transfer from your account, then you can do that synchronously. So you won't have any issues with uh, any of these things uh, doing in a uh, synchronous way, right? But uh, uh, most importantly, uh, when you need to have some sort of notification uh, related to some changes happen in the server side, at that point, uh, you will need to have uh, some sort of uh, asynchronous communication or some solution for that, right? And also when you work with the synchronous communication, uh, if your server processing time is too large, then uh, you have to wait for a long time, right? So in that case also, you will need uh, some solution to, uh, for that as well, right? So to address these things, uh, uh, polling is uh, one approach. So if you go back to previous uh, restaurant example again, so in this case, uh, we have a 
uh, shop owner or the person who served the foods and uh, then we place the order and uh, we go sit somewhere and time to time we come to counter and ask uh, whether my food is ready or not right so this person can then uh, check whether food is ready or not then based on that he can respond saying okay your food is ready here's your food or else you can ask him to come again right so we, we go to count again and again ask and at one point uh, we will get our food so that is the polling right so when it comes to polling uh, there are some uh, uh, problems associated with that so that includes uh, so if we consider the service world or the api world then uh, there are like additional network calls between client and server then uh, in the processing in the server side client side for each call and some of the researchers found that only five percent of the uh, new results we are getting through the polling uh, so eventually all these things uh, cause to a kind of a poor use experience so this is about the generic pooling but there are like smart pooling and uh, some advanced concept that address these uh, issues and uh, e-tag is one of the thing we introduce uh, one of the things introduced to address these cases but e-tag uh, only solves uh, half of the problem for example if we consider the uh, network communication part or the client side processing part so even these things uh, uh, have some impact even with the uh, e-tag concept right so to address that uh, we will need something like asynchronous communication so if you go back to a uh, previous restaurant or food ordering example so in this case we are going to uh, go to restaurant and uh, we can check the menu and uh, order whatever the foods we need then we can go to our table and sit back and relax right so uh, after some time uh, once your meal is ready uh, the person uh, who took your order will serve that uh, meal to uh, your table and you can enjoy your meal so that way you don't have to go to counter again and again ask for that or else you don't have to wait uh, wait in the counter till your food is cooked so that way uh, you can get your food in a synchronous way so this is one example for uh, the asynchronous communication so when it comes to asynchronous apis uh, why we need asynchronous APIs. So uh, when we need to receive some notifications about the social media event uh, that we can have as a asynchronous API communication. And uh, when you have a stock trading application and uh, you want some reminder when you're trading uh, or the when your accounts about to liquidization. So in such cases we can have. So basically these are the events, not something happened very frequently, but when that happened, uh, you will need to be notified. So for such cases, uh, we need asynchronous APIs and some other examples, including the transportation and logistic domain, where we need uh, live locations, uh, notification about the schedule updates. So these kind of things also uh, reap the benefit of uh, asynchronous APIs. So then uh, asynchronous uh, API implementation uh, is something we will need to discuss. So uh, here I have listed both synchronous and asynchronous communication. Uh, in, your, in your left side, you see the synchronous communication that includes uh, uh, REST and the gRPC. Uh, some variation of gRPC allows asynchronous as well, but uh, in this generally, uh, it's a synchronous communication. In your right side, you see uh, different implementations that we can use for asynchronous communication. But all these are not really implementations because if you consider the GraphQL, it's a, a schema language. Right? So you can define uh, your API definition using the GraphQL, but some implementation of the GraphQL will help you to implement asynchronous messaging or asynchronous API uh, methodology. And uh, on the other hand, uh, SSC and Webhook, these are like uh, web development methodologies. So with these methodologies, uh, you can implement uh, some server and the client application to have uh, asynchronous communication. And if you consider Nuts and Kafka, so these two are again lightweight messaging protocols, uh, not real protocols, lightweight messaging, uh, uh, messaging platforms. So these platforms have capability to do the asynchronous communication. So if you, are, if you want to implement something, you can use this platform. Then uh, WebSocket is a kind of a protocol. If you implement something on top of that, then uh, you can use that for the asynchronous communication as well. Similarly, uh, MQP, MQTT, all these you can use for the 
asynchronous communication so then uh, choosing uh, synchronous and the asynchronous for your application is a very very important decision right so when you uh, design application and when you architect your application you need to be mindful about all the services all the use cases that you have based on that you will have to select whether you need to go ahead with asynchronous communication or the synchronous communication so if you take most of the modern application we need both because uh, so if you consider shopping cart application uh, then we need uh, synchronous communication for the order place and uh, like order update kind of thing uh, and we need asynchronous communication for the delivery notification and other notification types so once you choose asynchronous api for your usage then you need to identify the protocol as well because unlike uh, the synchronous communication in the asynchronous communications you have a wide variety of protocols like i explained earlier so if you want, if you have something uh, like a multiplex bidirectional a large data volume you can go ahead with the uh, websocket and uh, if you are developing a browser based applications you need uh, uh, asynchronous communication with the server side you can go for server sent event and if you need some simple uh, push notification sort of thing uh, you can go for webhook so likewise based on your use case you will have to uh, select right protocol after you select uh, uh, asynchronous api for your application so then uh, i'll need to uh, discuss a bit about async api specification because uh, uh, like i mentioned earlier we have wide variety of protocols but async api specification standardizes this uh, asynchronous api design and documentation and also that uh, allows us to uh, have api definitions in the protocol agnostic view uh, then uh, we can see a lot of uh, tooling support available around async api specification so basically document generation client generation sdk generation uh, so those things are like rapidly evolving and also it address uh, event driven architecture specific requirement so async api specification is a really good thing and uh, we we all should appreciate the effort by effort from fragments and uh, async api uh, team so they, that's a really good thing and uh, most of the organizations and the users reap the benefit of uh, this async api definition so then i'll uh, from here onward i'll discuss about uh, api management side of the uh, asynchronous api so uh, if you look at a typical api product life cycle uh, it will be something like that so you start with uh, building your api by picking specific technologies and the protocols so then you go for the assembly part in the assembly part uh, you basically integrate with external systems or the different systems uh, with your api so then you go for the packaging approach so when you go for the packaging you associate a different business plan you associate document for your api then uh, apply the categorization uh, with that you do the packaging part so then once you are done with that you go for the delivery stage so in the delivery stage you can either deliver that to api marketplace or else you can uh, cater on demand uh, your apis so then we will need some uh, automation uh, around the pipeline i mean no automation part uh, along with the pipeline and uh, some automation technology so that is how we design develop and uh, deliver our api so this life cycle equally applicable for asynchronous apis as well because in the end they are also uh, another type of apis and uh, if we consider api management related quality of services so if you are familiar with the rest api management part uh, there we need to have uh, authentication and authorization part uh, rate limiting and the throttling uh, usage data monitoring and alerting and the business insight uh, and uh, conformity scan kind of thing right so all these concept equally apply for asynchronous api management as well and we will discuss about these things in uh, later this presentation so uh, so in this diagram uh, you see uh, event driven api management architecture and the component overview how component is structured uh, with this particular use case so uh, when we go when we work with our consumers and the customers so this is uh, the uh, component structure we see most of the organization 
So basically you can see in on your top uh, different client applications. So these client applications are the ones uh, consumed by the end users. So they basically interact with these devices and uh, consume the data. So next we have API management layer. So I have highlighted that in the green color. So uh, later in this presentation, I will mainly discuss about uh, how different uh, quality of services and uh, other API management related things applicable in this layer. So uh, then we have uh, uh, message brokers and the event driven microservices layer and uh, reactive data stores. So this is how uh, this uh, communication happened. And uh, as API management vendors, our main focus is to provide all your quality of services and all your API demand in the API management layer, uh, rather uh, putting that uh, weight into uh, other components in this diagram. Okay. So uh, one thing uh, I need to discuss first is API development experience. So uh, most of the organizations, uh, they have uh, API developer and the API product manager roles, right? So these roles uh, were there for some time and they get used to develop API. So they, the, the standard practice for them is to start with the API definition. And then uh, once, once they've done the initial design, they hand over it to development team, they implement the API, then uh, API product manager will associate policies, and then eventually it goes to API marketplace and things like that. So this particular flow will be equal for uh, async API development as well. So when you have API management uh, solution, uh, it would be great if we can give the same experience for uh, asynchronous API development as well. So basically, uh, if your developers are familiar with design, develop, de development, deploy, test, and publish flow, uh, we can have similar process for asynchronous APIs as well. So then uh, these users can easily adapt uh, asynchronous APIs as well. Uh, on the, at the same time, uh, people who consume API. So th these are the people who actually use your API. So they also get used to a specific uh, user flow. So they basically come to API developer portal or API marketplace. Then they search for API. Then they read through the documentation. Then they try out APIs. And uh, after they subscribe or buy uh, these APIs. So that particular experience also uh, need to uh, something similar to the rest in uh, asynchronous world as well. So uh, when you select API management platform, uh, make sure this experience is not completely different from uh, what they what they are familiar. So that way they can easily pick this. And uh, if I discuss about the API security, uh, if you all are familiar with the REST API security, most of the time we secure our APIs with uh, OAuth2, basic OAuth, or uh, like uh, mutual SSL or things like that, right? But when it comes to uh, asynchronous API, due to this uh, variety of protocols, uh, these protocols have their own uh, specific security mechanism. So for example, if you consider the webhook, in the webhook world, uh, the hub scenario, uh, the security mechanisms we use like a verification token, uh, signature, HMAC signature, or thin payload or mutual SSL, right? But if your API management solution can only secure APIs with uh, OAuth2 only, uh, then that won't fit very nicely uh, in this world, right? So uh, when you pick API management solution or when you build the API management solution, you have to be mindful about these facts because uh, when it comes to API security, asynchronous API uh, having uh, different uh, protocols and these protocols having their own security mechanism, so we have to uh, support these uh, security mechanisms as well. So similarly, uh, WebSocket can be secured with this standard auth. Uh, SSC can be secured with the tokens. Uh, but if you look at this uh, webhook scenario, uh, the HMAC kind of thing, supporting HMAC kind of thing uh, is somewhat important. Right? And uh, then uh, these security mechanisms need to be uh, inbuilt in the API management product, because otherwise you have to plug the modules or do some additional work. So then uh, rate limiting also, we have uh, a similar concept. So if you are familiar with the REST API rate limiting, most of the time we rate limit based on the number of requests for the bandwidth, right? But when it comes to asynchronous world, uh, we have to be uh, uh, consider some new dimensions like uh, 
uh, number of events transfer, number of uh, active subscriptions at any given time. So that sort of things we need to consider when we define rate limit. And also importantly, when you define business plan, business plans also need to associate with uh, this uh, new dimension. So that is uh, another very important thing uh, we need to consider uh, asynchronous API management part. And uh, when it comes to monitoring and alerting also, we have uh, cases like this. So uh, in the rest world, we, we usually show request count and things like that. But when it comes to this world, uh, we will need to uh, monitor a number of active connections and we need to visualize them. And uh, when in our graph and the usage data metering places, uh, we need to have uh, that information as well. So that is, again, a very important aspect. So then uh, I'll discuss a bit about the content scanning and the filtering. So if you all are familiar with uh, GraphQL, uh, when you uh, use GraphQL, you can say uh, what are the uh, fields you are interested. So when you when you subscribe to some event, you can uh, say tell, uh, okay, I need only these ten fields out of these hundred fields. So then you will be notified with only uh, those ten fields. So likewise, uh, these days most of the consumers expect API management platform to do some filtering, content filtering, and the like uh, uh, content filtering kind of thing for them. Uh, so, for example, uh, when you configure uh, API and uh, your backend systems and uh, like uh, event with 100 different attributes and you need to pass only 10 for your end subscribers, uh, we need to have that capability. So having that sort of capability in API management platform is really good and really helpful uh, to uh, uh, provide API management capability without modifying backend for uh, each and every small change. So then uh, ability to connect with uh, different event streams is also very important. Uh, so if you uh, bring API management platform into your deployment and that particular platform can support only uh, REST or the HTTP, that will be a problem because uh, most of the time uh, new API management systems can work with uh, these asynchronous related protocols as well. So gRPC, uh, Webhook, WebSocket, uh, that, that sort of protocol need to be uh, supported within this platform. And also, it would be beneficial if your API management system can directly communicate with the message brokers or the event sources as well. So otherwise, as you can see in this diagram, so this uh, uh, green color highlighted box, I represent the API management part. So inside that, we will need a uh, WebSocket server to communicate with the message broker and expose that uh, to outside as an API. Uh, if you don't have this capability in your API management platform, you will have to bring uh, some additional component here and let that component to communicate with message broker and then expose that service as a managed API to outside. So when you select API management platform for asynchronous API, be mindful about these things as well. Check whether uh, this API management platform can communicate with uh, other protocols or other messaging systems and uh, provide a wide variety of protocols. That is very important to uh, have ability to connect with different event sources and directly expose them as a uh, managed APIs. OK, so I think uh, these are the things uh, I need to highlight uh, with uh, related to API management related to asynchronous APIs. So now I will take uh, questions if you have any. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sanjua. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but we definitely enjoyed your conversation, your presentation this afternoon, and hope that you can continue to engage with, you know, the audience participants in the in the chat. And also, yeah. if you can just tell us how to reach you or how to follow your work, that would be great. Okay, so uh, you can find me on the LinkedIn. Uh, you can search for Sanjua Malagode and. Uh, then uh, in the Twitter, uh, Sanjeeva190 is my Twitter ID. So you can connect with me. Thank you so much for making time to be here today. We really learned a lot from you. OK, thank you very much. Thank you.